The first one is about um, Bloodshot. Bloodshot? Yeah, starring Vin Diesel. I'm aware that it's an action movie with Vin Diesel. We can rebuild you. And we can show a tons of special effects. <laughs> Diesel. <laughs> he means the money badly. Okay, so Ryan, should we give a plot synopsis before we talk about the film so people know what we're talking about? Yes, please. So we are talking today about Bloodshot movie review by Ryan Bokwell. This is action and adventure science fiction and fantasy film directed by David S.F. Wilson. The story is by Jeff Wadlow and it's based on Bloodshot by Kevin Van Hook, Don Perlin, Bob Layton. I guess that's a comic book, is it, Ryan? Do you know? Yes. The plot... After he and his wife are murdered, so that's not a plot spoiler because that is actually how the film opens, Marine Ray Garrison is resurrected by a team of scientists. Enhanced with nanotechnology, he becomes a superhuman biotech killing machine, Bloodshot. As Ray first trains with fellow super soldiers, he cannot recall anything from his former life. But when his memories flood back and he remembers the man that killed both him and his wife, he breaks out of the facility to get revenge only to discover that there's more to the conspiracy than he thought. It's a sci-fi uh, action revenge movie. Yeah. It makes me think of Captain America. Uh, resurrected, he's given special powers. Ryan says, I was excited for this fresh new comic book movie starring Vin Diesel. This new digital release was a disappointment. Pros, yeah. Ryan says that Vin Diesel is a badass in terms of physicality. Cons, all of the characters were not that well developed. Vin Diesel might have the physicality for this role, but this film didn't do him justice, and the storytelling aspects were uh, sorely lacking. Yes. I noticed that Guy Pearce is in this, and it's a shame that he didn't get, like, a better role, really, or they didn't... Uh, when you say they didn't put the actors to good use, I feel that he was a bit wasted. I mean, all the things I can remember him... <laughs> Iron Man 3, and that's it. <laughs> Uh, Guy Pierce is that? Yes. Okay, he's had a lot. He's had a good career, Ryan. He's in some really good films. Check out Memento if you've never seen it from two thousand and one. That's a very try. good film. I will try. This was a disappointment, but was it fun to watch whilst you were watching it? Well, yeah, it turns out like the first twenty minutes, <laughs> like goes off his first mission, and then after that, it's just gone downhill from there. Okay, so when he actually becomes bloodshot is when it goes downhill. That's a shame. <laughs> yeah. I find, Ryan, I quite like the origin stories for superheroes. I like it when they set up, like whenever oh, they do Peter too, Parker, yeah, yeah. becoming Spider-Man and learning how to crawl. I always love that. And then I tend to get a bit bored towards the end of those types of movies when they actually fight the bad guy. Like, my favourite one of that would be Hellboy. I love the setting up of Hellboy, the first movie. But the bad guy just wasn't that interesting. So I was kind of like, oh, by the end of the movie. But learning about the character and who they are and how they become who they are, that's quite interesting. The next one we're going to do is Black Lightning Season 3. Right. Now, Ryan has posted this to our Facebook page, Level Best Art Cafe. So I've had a, a quick look at the post that Ryan... Tell us about Black Lightning. What is it? One of those um, superhero shows. Okay, so it's a TV show. Yeah, been going on for like two seasons up to this point, which is the third. Yeah, this is Ryan's graphic, uh, Black Lightning, and it says season three at the top of your review. Yes, Steve. So it's well, still going strong? Yep, it's still going strong. Good. Yeah, the Mongolians attack the ASA to all Friedman on lockdown. What a... Black right, Lightning little, little Girls to form a secret identity <laughs> take a toll on the Pierce family. Okay, so this plot is directly related to events happening in season one and two, is it? Yes, indeed. So do you think people could come into season three, or would you recommend they start at the very beginning? Recommend start very the beginning, yes. Okay. It's available... All three seasons are available on Netflix. Ah, fantastic. Okay, so you can binge this all the way through. Good stuff. Well, somebody, really, this is one of the um, things on there that are going too long or episodes, like 22 each. Wow. I know, 22 episodes. 
Can I ask, Ryan, are they individual stories for each episode, or is it one big story that each episode tells in bits? Well, not like in um, label, but most of the characters have got something else going on in between seasons. Okay, so characters are developed over the course of the seasons, but yeah. possibly each episode, if there's 22 episodes in each season... They deal with a bad guy and a situation in each episode, and then it starts with another story, does it? Well, you're really close there, really okay. close. And um, I think it's like, like, it's an interesting one, because um, one of the um, Jefferson doors, which is the older one, which is like, is, um, has a lover, as a female lover. Okay. No, no, great. Metahuman. Metahuman? <laughs> yeah, which is the upper version of basically like the same gene as the Flash in his robes. Um, but... You mentioned, Ryan, sorry, can I just ask, you mentioned in your review that you wish the Justice League were there in the final battle. Now, that would suggest that this is a... DC comic. Superman and Batman. See, sorry, so this is the DC universe. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right. So do other characters from the DC universe enter into the uh, Black Lightning storyline? He did um, show up in the um, process of his Earth crossover not very too long ago. Who's that, sorry? Oh, you know, of course, it's on the intimate house. I don't, Ryan. But yeah. which character are we talking about? The Flash? Oh, sorry, Black Lightning. Black Lightning. Okay, the program's called Black Lightning, Ryan. So I was asking, do other DC characters come into this no. program? Okay. So the Justice no. League don't turn up? No. It was the final battle, but they didn't. Yeah. This is like, they, they, he did show up in the actual main crossover. And sadly, they only mentioned it, like, a few times in one episode. And that's about it. Just to not distract with what the main story is about, which is the Pierce family is dealing with with this lockdown situation in Freeland. In Freeland, yeah. This is quite sweet, Ryan. You mentioned at the end of your review, every actor did an outstanding job with their roles. The special effects was top-notch was the fact that this season showed how a proud city like Freeland can respond to a lockdown pandemic by the Markovians. And you can feel for the Jefferson family and what they are going through this season. Yes. Obviously, this was filmed and the story is way before uh, the global pandemic that we're in now. But you're saying that you will really relate to this in lockdown. Yes, this one was way before the pandemic came. As a near back home. This does look really interesting, Ryan. You're obviously very complimentary about it. So, if I may, Ryan's cons for this programme. The season did drag a lot, and I wish the Justice League uh, were there for the final battle. So that's all you say about the negatives. So, perhaps 22 episodes per season. Is that too many episodes, do you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. It, because it feels like it dragged on. <laughs> Forever and ever. Yeah. Like, ugh. Get, oh, get on with it. Is it kind of building towards this final battle the whole time? Is it building oh, up yeah, to that? definitely, yeah. Okay. It reminds me, if I may quickly, about the program Heroes that was out uh, 10 years ago. I wasn't a fan. I didn't watch many episodes. It was a bit boring because they kept talking about what will happen and it never really dealt with anything in the moment. They kept saying, New York City will be destroyed. And you're like, well, make it happen. I want to see that because I'm bored. So does this program, is it, is it boring in, in parts then because it doesn't get to the point? Oh, no, it's one of those, no, really, it's, it was a joy for me to watch, but for, like, in certain moments and officers and, like, backstab each other and, like, shooting most of the medals with which they didn't meet to and backstabbing and all that. So, unnecessary. <coughs> Go on then, move, continue on from there. <coughs> move along, move along. Okay, so there was lots of intrigue that you found a bit distracting. You wish they'd stayed to the main story or the main 
Is there a main bad guy? You you mentioned the Markovians. So are they like an alien race or what? What are the Markovians? No, just like a say, it's more like military unit. Okay, it the name Markovian sounds quite Star Trek like to me. It doesn't sound like an Earth based thing. So they are the bad guys, definitely. Well, most of the ones that go rogue, yes. Gone rogue. Okay, so you mentioned military units. So I'm guessing they were once good guys, and now they are kind of uh, fighting against this yeah. freeland city that you mentioned. Oh yeah, and also one of them gone rogue and discovered their actual plan <laughs> as well. Okay, and the kids have the superpowers. Yeah, similar like the Flash, but just different abilities. Like this guy. This young girl, I was with, he can knock the wall very hard. Uh, is that like super strength then? They can knock down buildings or walls? Yeah, well, similar to like that, yeah. I was going to mention Doom Patrol, which is a program that's a bit like the X-Men. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, again, it's a collective uh, groups of misfits who have superpowers and they learn how to use their powers for good. So this program feels like it fits in with a, a big genre like that. Does this one stand above those other programs? Is this better than anything else you've seen um, or is it one of the well, mill? Well, yeah, instead of like super worries, it's basically like a family get through all this drama, deal with it as a family. You mentioned the Jeffersons. Are they the characters that we see in your poster on your review? Yes. Well, the father and the two daughters, the young one and the old one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. So we, we understand who our protagonists are now, the Jefferson family against the Markovians. Yeah. Is that the end of it, Ryan, or is there more to come? Just a breath, I mean, I'm not really that sure because everything is under lockdown at the moment. Yeah. And I mention every week, if a program hasn't been finished before lockdown, there's no guarantee that it will reassemble to film more series or seasons. So, we fingers crossed. You would like to see more of Black Lightning, though, would you? Well, yeah. Cool. If this lockdown finish on in time. Yeah. If it's not, then... What a way to go out. It's a good place to leave it if it has to. If there's a hiatus or a pause, yeah. it's a good place to get to. Season three. Yeah. All right. In my opinion. Good. Well, this is all about your opinion, Ryan, which I value. So thank you. Right. The next one I'm going to do is about Fantasy Island. Fantasy Island. Have you posted about this, Ryan? Yes, finally. Yeah. Okay. Which stars Michael Pena, Maggie Q, Lucy Ale, and, yep. and Michael Walker. Okay, once again, this is the post that Ryan's done. So that's the image you'd be looking for, for Fantasy Island. Based on Fantasy Island TV show, which I've not heard of, Ryan. Uh, is that on terrestrial, or like English TV, or is it American TV? No, I think this is like a very, very, very old TV show. This is okay. Like years ago. Okay, so th this is a modern uh, revamp of an older thing. Yes. Okay. And it's more to a horror movie. First off, I'm not going to waste any time here. It's bad. It's a bit Okay. Bad. <laughs> Good to know. You know um, people behind Truth of Dare from last year? So, is this paranormal? Yes, but very stupid paranormal. With one of that stupid, grubby face. I imagine it has the cast of characters we would expect from a film like this. Have you ever seen the film Cabin in the Woods? No, but I have heard of it. I just, without trying to spoil it, that's a really funny take on horror movies. A send-up of Evil Dead and movies like that, where you have the group of, like, sexy young high schoolers who get themselves in trouble and they all go different ways. I don't want to spoil that film, but Cabin in the Woods is a great way to understand how these kind of films are made, like what the tropes, what to look out for. So it sounds like this was not very um, uh, creative or original, sorry, is the word I was looking for, take on the survival horror genre. Oh, yeah. You've written it science fiction and fantasy, so I might be jumping the gun, Ryan. Is it a horror movie? That sometimes it doesn't know what it wants to be. Okay. Either a horror movie or a slasher flick or just 
fun fantasy adventure everyone had to work together to escape the island. It also sounds a bit like Lost, long-winded TV program about people having to escape a mysterious island. But this is a movie, so they, they managed to... Whatever happens, it happens by the end of this film. Yes. That's good. So you're not having to wait for endless episodes to find out what's going on. Yeah. This is a waste of time. Save your money. The yep. film itself is Rosemary Polish, with everyone like... Hello, welcome to Fantasy Island. Do you know how I keep likening it to things, Ryan? Sorry, have you ever seen the documentary about the Fire Festival from a couple of years ago? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that one, yeah. Does this remind you of Fire Festival then? You know, where it's like, hey, well, welcome to the and then it's not great. Yeah, it's awful. Well, really close, but I see where you're going there. Yeah. No, I just like to make connections. Yeah. That's, that's great. <laughs> okay, so it looks polished, which I assume yeah. means the visual, the location is probably wonderful. Yeah. But if you're, if you're interested in story and a good made film, this is not that. This is not a well made film. Nope. Okay. And, and most of all, this is another great opportunity of something to create something special, mm -hmm. and it was wasted. Yeah, that is frustrating, isn't it? When you see the potential and you think, if only they'd done that. Yeah, that Fantasy Island, in a nutshell, a way to time, save your money, or something yep. you get better. So, talking about something better, Ryan, what else have you got for us? I'm going to move now to wrestling. Always a safe bet, yep. Which is, go to all of these wrestling percents, double or nothing, 2020. What you will expect to see, so this... Yep is the graphic for Double or Nothing. Now, I think it was last week or the week before, we spoke about these special events, these pay-per-view events that WWE, yeah. the World Wrestling Entertainment Corporation, put on. So this is another pay-per-view, is it? Yes, but this one is a completely different company. This is a new one, brand new. AEW, all elite wrestling. Okay. I um, have got, like, a couple of familiar ones. Ryan lists the commentators, the ring yeah. announcers, the referees, and who the interviews are by. And then there's a lot of imagery. You talk about what the matches are, but maybe you could summarize for us, Ryan, for those people that aren't wrestling fans, but that would like to know what you've written about, what is Double or Nothing? Ah, uh, why? It's a sim their signature like event, which was last year was for their first show. In the MGM Grand in Las Vegas last May, and they um, used that as a backdrop to Double or Nothing, which is basically copy off Las Vegas like feel, as it has lost play or night gamble all night. Oh god, what the? <laughs> Say Vegas. I wouldn't know, I've never been. But Double or Nothing, so it's about gambling and a Las Vegas kind of vibe, yeah? Correct. You are absolutely correct there. Thank you. Uh, so is the it's a wrestling match. We should establish this. It's wrestling, but it's got this MGM uh, casino-like backdrop. And do they do any kind of gimmicky gambling things in the ring? Sadly, no. Okay. But you did see, like, a little bit of the um, poker table there. By one wrestler just tossed another wrestler into one of them and broke the table. Right, so the poker table was there just to be broken by someone's head. Okay, that's yes. interesting. That was <laughs> that was the first show last year, but this year, because of the coronavirus, they can't do it in Vegas. Instead, they rescheduled it now to Jacksonville. Yeah. So mostly, most of them can't come to work. That's a good point. So the wrestlers that would normally wrestle out of Las Vegas, maybe, can't make it to Jacksonville, Florida, which is a long way away, that America has policies a bit like the UK about long distance travel. So oh, yeah. it's possible that wrestlers can't get from the West Coast to the East Coast to oh, take yeah. part. Is that the case, do you think, that wrestlers can't physically get there? Um, yeah, like a few. They got pretty more of their small key talent. But most of the other wrestlers, they are not wrestling. They are used to the cloud. They are used for the cloud. So they've made the wrestling into clouds on this night. 
the wrestlers are being the crowd. Sorry, I understand now. The wrestlers are making the effect of the crowd. Because I mentioned in a previous interview that it must be very quiet if you haven't got the uh, the crowd. Say, it does, like, um, affect a lot of the show. Yeah. I have no crowds there, which is sad, but what are you going to do? Yeah, you can't have a crowd right now. I mean, it'd be very dangerous if the wrestling promoters tried to organise a big crowd. But, but, you know, maybe people can cheer at home. They can make up their own uh, atmosphere, you know. Yeah, or probably just watching on the television. There you go. And then you or can just... Hard, it, on their phone. How long is this? I would say four hours. They've got names like Cody Rhodes, which is the American dream Dusty Rhodes' um, son. Dustin Rose, which is the oldest son of the American Dreams. And you got Matt Hardy being one. Uh... It lost on me, Ryan. As we said the other time, I wouldn't know modern wrestlers, but if you're a wrestling fan, hopefully you're happy with the name dropping. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. mentioned this in your review, don't you? You list these names. I thought it was fitting that I had some pictures on there to represent each of my words. So it'd be easier for the readers to like, oh, they were there. Oh, that's got to hurt. There are a lot of fun gifts what's going on. So you, you definitely get a feel for the pandemonium and the mayhem. Was it was it good? Yeah, that's when I put C plus on there. It was a good show, but other than the action and the pantry, it does suffer from having no crowds there. Mm, yeah. So they had to, like, use the people they got available to them at the moment to try to make the most of what they have. Yeah. Including have a guest appearance by Mike Tyson. Okay, when in doubt, call on Mike. Yeah, great. <laughs> and sadly, no, he didn't knock out any. Probably for the best. You enjoyed it overall. It was a shame not to have the atmosphere of the crowd, but we understand why. But you still enjoyed it? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay, do you recommend it, Ryan? Oh, yeah, for those wrestling fans. Yeah. If you want to get into AEW or WWE... <laughs> Sorry, that was my dog barking. Okay. As you say, this is a brand new wrestling corporation or company, AEW. Yeah, so this yeah, intro to them. Yeah, which started a year ago. It's an introduction to AEW and WWE, which is the mainstay. Uh, but if you want to know about this brand new wrestling company, this is a nice in. Because it has some really funny pictures and, as I say, animated GIFs yeah. on Ryan's review. So you can you can watch those for fun if you're not a wrestling fan. And if you are, you can see all the information that relates to this pay-per-view event. Yeah. Or if you're not a wrestling fan, if you want to get Stein, watch this one. Okay, so check it out if you're new to wrestling. It is quite funny uh, to look at. The Great Mouse Detective, Disney. The Great Mouse Detective, yeah, I've seen this review yeah, on your... Yeah, great movie. It's a great movie. Is that a throwback review, Ryan? Correct. 1986. Like um, Sherlock Holmes. And if you've not heard of The Great Mouse Detective, very Sherlock Holmes influenced. 1986 was a bit of a quiet time for Disney. They had a big hit, uh, The Little Mermaid, which was 1989, I think. Is this good, Ryan? Oh, yeah, it's a great film. Oh, you did mention the first I thing you said was that it was good. I recommend people watching it on Disney+. Plus. Wonderful. So this is another example of what your Disney Plus account is good for. Is there any more content on the Disney Gallery yet, do you know? Or is it still just about um, Mandalorian? Well, they got a live concert with Taylor Swift. I think they're just like, trying to find new content. They'd like call Taylor Swift up. <laughs> Can you record your concert to our Plus? <laughs> and she... As Ryan and I have been discussing since just before lockdown and, and during lockdown, Disney Plus, which is quite a new service, has to compete with Amazon Prime, Netflix, YouTube. I mean, there's yeah. so much stuff to get for free. So yeah. they really have to pull out all the stops and win the public over to their service. Um, HBO Max. 
which is a Warner Media service. Yeah, I was going to say what we're going to talk about Monday is still going to be your um, review talks about Star Wars. Oh, lovely, yep. About the Clone Wars movie and mm-hmm. um, the Clone Wars TV show season one. Is it seven seasons of the Clone Wars? Yes, indeed. Well, so that's potentially a lot, a bit like South Park, that's a lot of watching for Ryan to do and then talk about. So we've been talking about Ryan's interest in the Star Wars saga from beginning to end in the correct yeah. order. And Ryan has posted about the Clone Wars TV program and the feature movie. Uh, the bit, Ryan, I was talking about General Grievous getting injured. I think that's in the movie, the Clone Wars movie. Uh, so if you've seen that now, you've probably seen that fight scene between him and Mace Windu. Oh, yeah. Talk more Star Wars animated programs next week. Sure thing. And South Park Season 14. Ryan has also posted his review for South Park Season 14. More than halfway through, but you've still got about 10 or so seasons to get through after that. So we'll catch up with Ryan's thoughts on South Park in the 2010s next week. Okay, okay. All right, man. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah.